Good morning. Let's talk about visioneering today. Um, have every anyone in uh, their course of life, you look back today? Okay, let's look at it. Our life today. You look at it today. Let's say we married, right? We are kids. Yep. And if you look back at a teenager, teenager at that time, you look back and you say, okay, is this plan or is this happen? Or happen? It is planned actually. You have a vision that you have, you said, I'm going to have, I'm going to marry, I'm going to get married, I'm going to settle down, this is what I'm going to do. And today you look back and say, okay, this was actually planned. In those days, we are teenagers, 16 years old probably, 50 years old, you have this vision that ah, I like to do that, I like to have this, I like to have a family, I like to come to New Zealand. And something sparked you and everything was planned. Life is always a plan, your plan, but unconscious plan we call it. So what I'm teaching today is for you to stay now and look back. Five ten years, and that's where you come from. And now is to go forward five ten years and look back to see this is what you're gonna be, what you want, and then look back and say how are we gonna get there. That is what we're gonna do today, and this is called visioneering. Visioneering means that you close your eyes and vision where you are now, which is five years later, and this is what you want, and then that is what you want, what you have now, what you got now is five years later and look backward today and this is where your path is going to go this is what we're going to do okay. I'll let you watch a video this guy you might know about him oh, power process, visualize So this gentleman is Dennis Wigley. Anybody knows about Dennis Wigley? Yep. Yes. Dennis Wigley is actually a con he is one of the person in USANA. He is the person that actually guide USANA to where we are today. And he is mentor, our mentor in USANA. And he said that USANA is the only company in the world that attracts his attention, that he would like to partner with USANA to help USANA grow from where they were. And then he is the one that trained a full astronaut to go up to the moon and he's the one that has been was training a lot of Olympic medalists to get gold and all that. And how he uses is use the people's 
visualization to become so real that actually visualize themselves winning the gold. So what happened is that the person will sit down and just visualize that they already got the first prize and they feel every detail of their body movement, everything, even the sweat and heartbeat start going up and the pulse and the smile, everything is so real. And then he found that the people, the heartbeat, everything changed because their brain actually tricked the brain to become so real. So when the thing happened, there's just deja vu. Oh, let's go, do it. That's how it works. So that is what we call visualize, power of visualization. Okay. The process of making a vision or a dream a reality. And how is this? Is that you must imagine yourself right in the state of fulfilled desire. Fulfilled desire means that this is what from your heart, your desire, you fulfill your imagine yourself right in the state. The state means that everything comes in. The future must become the present. The imagination of one would, who would wisely and consciously create circumstances means that what it means is that if you visualize and the thing become real, you will take the path of the person. Everything becomes what you are after. Let's look at visionary example. The example of our limitation. Okay, look at it. How we are brought up every day. We are brought up by our see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. So these are the things that's outside world that impress upon us. That, and then we become what we are today because of our grown up our people we associate with our mom, the food we eat. Our, in the, our uh, uh, grown up behavior. So, our behavior mainly is from what the outside world has trained us to become what we are. I just give an example. If you are a Western kid, okay, growing up in China, in the Chinese family, what will happen? The kids will become like a Chinese. You can't speak English, can do nothing, you just know Chinese thing. And you put a Chinese kid in um, South Africa. Same thing will happen. This Chinese kid can't speak Chinese and become like exactly like those people and thinking everything the same. Right? So we say that the, why is because they are brought up see, smell, taste, taste, uh, see, hear, smell, taste, touch is impressed upon their uh, uh, intellectual mind, is a conscious mind, which also automatically impressed into a subconscious mind. That's how we become what we are. So we call it our emotional mind or that create us our paradigm, our vibration that give us our world, our belief, our belief system, what we believe is, is what has been created upon us. And I just give you an example of our limitation, four minute mouse. Anyone heard of four minutes mouse? Yeah. You heard of it? Mm. Okay. What actually happened in 19, <coughs> before 1954, everyone believed that people cannot break four minutes. In one, well, four minutes, you can't break a mile. Why? It's because people have no limitation. They're physically, they cannot run as fast as the elephant, leopard. They can't beat the four minutes mile. Because one mile is impossible for human physically to break four minutes within a mile. Okay, so, but before, in 1954, Roger Bannister broke it in 3.59 minutes. 3 minutes 59 seconds. And he broke that record. So after that, there are 1,400 people breaking that record. And they interview all these 1,400 people. How come you can't start breaking all this record? Oh, I'm just trying to beat Roger Bannister. I'm trying to beat their record. That's it. So what does it tell us? Is our limitation is not hold back my mind. So if everyone, don't, before that people say, can't happen, can't happen, impossible, impossible. But when someone broke it, everyone broke it. So our limitation is hold back by all this. That's what they tell us then. So how are we gonna get that limitation broke up today? Is what we call it visualization, order of visualization. What we do is that first of all, exercise the visualizing faculty to keep your mind in order. How we do that is order. First of all, cut off all the outside world. Senses cut off, just like meditation, cut off everything. And this is focus on two things. 
imagination and the will. Imagination, imagine. Okay. Yeah. Visualizing faculty. Visualize. That's imagination. Use that. And keep your faculty to keep your mind in order. So in order. Very important is that why you keep your mind in order is they cut off the outside world and keep your mind so that, that it will keep your mind in order. If you put in all this thought inside, then your mind can't be in order. You have thoughts running over it. Everything. Here, everything. Okay, everything can be distracting our mind. So our mind has to be very clear and in order. So cut off everything and keep your mind in order. It will attract to you what you need to make your life more enjoyable in an orderly way. So keep your mind in order with the, the visualizing faculty and with the will, will to focus on it. Focus on it. On that thing. Just that thing there after. It will attract to you what you need to make your life more enjoyable and in an orderly way. Next thing, train yourself in the practice of deliberately picturing your desire and carefully examine your picture. Okay, this is very important. Okay, so what it means here is that, okay, let's say, example, you visualize that I have this house by the sea. Oh, people say that because I just, everyone say, everyone say, Sea and hear the sea. Everyone got a house. My friend all oh, like to have a house by the sea. Okay, by the beach. Then you visualize. I want to have that house by the beach, by the sea. Then you realize that. Hmm. Then you examine the picture. They're picturing your desire and carefully examine your picture. Then examine. a lot of people running outside and every day I have to wash the windows and when the wind comes after a lot of sand comes in is that what I want? No, I don't think I like that I'll, I think I have to change my goal again a little bit because this is not what I actually want so deliberate picturing your desire desire comes from where? from the heart, right from the heart the desire, not people desire, your desire. So picture your desire, what I want. So I said, okay, this is not what I want. We picture it, okay, this is what I want. I want a house by the top of the hill, can see the sea. Ah, <coughs> that's good, that's what I want. That's what I want. So examine my picture. Okay, this is what I want. My desire, my desire, this is what I want. By the sea, not by the sea, but by the hillside. And I don't want it to be too far away from Auckland so that I can get probably 45 minutes maximum. Then by the hilltop, a big lane, and I have a helipad. That's my desire. Yes. Make sure there's a place I can put a helicopter there. That's my desire. Good. Examine that picture. Examine that picture. That is the that is the key. So this is what my desire, no people's desire, my desire. Then you'll get the next step. Okay. You'll find, you'll soon find that your thought and desire will proceed in a more orderly procession than ever before. Why? Because you're relaxed. Once you feel that, you're relaxed, you're order. And every day you work towards that picture, your goal, your picture. This is what you want in life. You want in life. Okay, your picture has to include okay, your family, your kids, your mom, what they are going to do in that picture. So that picture becomes freeze, become part of your soul and spirit. And every day you wake up, sleep, you picture that. Before you sleep, you picture that. You wake up, you picture that. That's what happens. That's how it works. And you have the power. Next thing, we work about the triad. The tribe is the thing that controls our meaning in life. Our meaning. What it means is that, okay, our paradigm is controlled by the tribe. It's how we grow up, how we see the world, how we tell ourselves the story. Okay? The story, the language, the language that told us things. That say, okay, this is the meaning of things. When you say, oh, some people say, let's say example, I am an Asian, uh -huh. 
and when someone said, "Hey, you Asian, uh, Mr. Ching," okay, some people can get very annoyed. Oh, I get a knife, I kill him, I kill him. Very annoyed. Some people say, "Hmm, interesting." That's it. Don't feel anything because the language I give myself to say, "Okay, that's him. That's a word. Doesn't mean anything to me." And some people mean a lot to him. So how he created that language, give the meaning of his life, that distort his intention of life. Is it worth it? It's not worth it. It changed the language. He say that thing. The language to me means differently. That's one way. The other way is a focus. How we focus on things because the focus is very important. Let's say example. I would say that I am sixty five. Let's say example. Oh, give you an example. Rachel, she is seventy one years old. Okay. Two way of doing focus is that some people where before they hit the age of even in the age of fifty, they say, "Oh, people at fifty five will be old and they will be sick and they all have tablets." They look at people. Look at that, sick and tired. Look at that on tablet. No, they all this fifty five people die at sixty. So life is not even short at sixty. They're focusing on that. Well, Rachel is focusing now. I'll go to the ninety. Seventy two is still young. I'm just eighteen years old. Seventy two. Look at that. Seventy two is still young. Look at that. Eighty is still young. Look at men. Eighty muscular. The focus is different. They look at the world differently. So two kind of people. So what we try, what we, the meaning we give ourselves is how we focus too. And the next one is physiology. Okay. Let's take example of that. Yeah. What we stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I want you to practice something. Feel it, so they can feel it. Okay. So, make sure that you you have your best moment. I want you to find out. Okay, in life, when you're kids, let's say when you're a teenager or when you're young, you got you got something you really going for and you got it in school. How do you feel? Your what you call anchor moment. What is your anchor? Moment? Find out your anchor moment today. When your anchor moment, like for me, I said yes. This is my anchor moment. It means that you feel the power. You got a goal. Let's say you got something. Yes, I got it. So I want you guys. You let's show your anchor. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, this is the anchor moment. Okay. <clears throat> we call it all ourselves. We have this anchor moment. Why is it get this anchor moment? Nothing can stop us. You got this girlfriend. Wow. Yes, I got yes. her. <laughs> I got my work. Yes. Ah, uh, this is the anchor moment. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. This anchor moment. Is our physiology. So how we do is is that this remember nothing can stop us. So let's say you are so excited, you anchor moment. I can you be sad? I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. You cannot be sad. Physiology cannot be sad. This is, this moment, how desperate, how terrible you are, you cannot be sad, yeah. right? But. If you are in the best moment, everything. Let's say, imagine yourself is very happy. You see this thing, you pay five thousand dollar check. <laughs> How do you feel? Would you feel happy? No, because your physiology is like that. <laughs> you bend your. Let's say bend down like this. Okay, I want you to be very sad. Can you? Be, How do you feel? Can you be excited? No, you can't be excited, right? Yeah. Even one thousand, five thousand dollar check, you can't be excited. Why? Because your physiology. So very important is I want you all to make sure their physiology. That's like uh, Rachel, seven two years old. She tell my mom. I keep reminding her, your posture is very important. She said you have to stay up. Otherwise, you like this, you feel old. Whether you feel old, you like this, you don't feel old at all. She tell my mom, you don't feel old at all. Look at me. Ah, I don't feel old at all. Okay, so physiology is very important. So the three is to try to control our life, yeah. how we get the things we want in life. So always remember when you feel down, physiology just get up, ah, never down. That's how Tiger Wood, how those Tiger Wood, all those people does is they have this anchor moment, they go for it. And speaker do that too in the backstage. All the speaker does that. I bet you and Jenny have the anchor moment too. The <laughs> secret. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. Next, we go back to the next. Next step is we have to combine that two. 
to get that. Okay, so get that meaning. Meaning will help us to alter our vibration. This will help us to alter our vibration by impressing, by imagination, put into a subconscious mind that create a new vibration that get to the world that we want. That is the trick. And and how? How? <laughs> that, that is a trick. So, do you go to church? Do you go to church? You pray? Yes, we pray. Okay, my key is the thing is that when we pray, we we'll normally pray like this. I would suggest we pray like that. Look up. God is up there. God is not down there below. You pray. You pray to the good. No, I will always tell you pray. You make your pray up. Because the thing is, firstly, help your posture. Secondly, is that you're looking up, so you're more open to receiving things. So always pray, and secondly, pray for ourselves too. That is visualization. But praying is part of visualization. Visualize, pray for ourselves. Because when you have it, then you help people. You would pray for other people. You don't have it. Then you say, ah, God, why don't you give me this? You never pray for yourself, you just pray for those people. Of course I give those people, you give, you ask me to help them, I help those people. So don't pray for yourself. Then when you get it, you can help people. Very important. So I always say that, okay, pray, make sure you pray for yourself as well. Pray, very important. Visualizing is praying. Part of praying is visualization. That's why people, some people are very successful getting what they want. Because they actually visualize to get a thing from God, have a religion, people the spiritual, God, everything is the same. You get the thing so they can keep. So they keep. And the next thing I want you all to learn about is to whoever have dream board. You got dream board, dream board? Dream board, yeah. Make sure your dream board have that very clear and examine that picture to make sure this is what you want. Very well. Heart's desire. Heart's desire. Um, the moment you, your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. What do you mean by fuse with it? It means that your belief, your belief, your belief holds up with the state that you are in. You become that person. You become, you fuse with it. And nothing can change you. And nothing can change you. You look forward to that. You become that person. Nothing can. Then you can fuse with it. You can go look backward. So if you said it means that you will become that person and that person, how did that person act, how did that person feel, how did that person visualize, how did that behave and then that is that person and today you are here so you can look backward and you become this person now to go forward. So in other words is that we are what we create, our world is what we created. The new state of consciousness, awareness becomes a new home from which you view the world. That's how Bill and Jenny got the uh, light bulb. Light bulb when she said, Ah, oh, gosh, everyone left Australia. Everyone left. Should we move? Should we leave? Should I go? And uh, all their downline went. So they said, Okay, this is the end. I can't. What can I do? Uh, so she got a moment. She said, Why, Bill, let's go up to One Tree Hill and have a look. Just go to one tree here and see how we feel. Hello. And, and she says that let's 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 see how we feel. Go up to one tree hill. And she and Bill go up to one tree hill. And then she look around and said, Man, there's so many people in Auckland. Why can't we stay behind rather than go to Australia? Look at the house, look at everyone, look at everything. Thousands of millions of people, 1.5 million. That's a lot. Bill, let's stay behind and let's work on it. That's where the new state of conscious, their new state of conscious awareness becomes their new home for which they view their world. Because they have become the thing. And if she and Bill Jenny say, I am not going to be just here. I'm going to become one of the biggest, strongest leader in USANA. I'm going to become the biggest ranking. And I believe that it's going to happen. And they visualize that at that time, which is year 2000. They can see that. 
And how they do that is using this method, the visualizing method. To fuse themselves, to calm that 17, 16, 13 star at that time, they visualize themselves 13 star or a lot of star, and then they start their journey. And they look back at that time, they just say, that, okay, this is what I'm going to be. Now I'm here, I look back, this is how I should become. And that's their journey going forward. Make sense? Okay. Thank you. That's it. And the key thing is to go back and look at your uh, dream board again, dream board again, visualize that and picture it and see is that the picture that you want. Examine that picture. Is that a picture of somebody's or a picture of your picture? And from there, chase your dream. Thank you. Sorry, I missed the whole thing. I have to drop my kid off.